Apology by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Why do I write today? The beauty of the terrible faces of our non entities stirs me to it. Colored women, day workers, old and experienced, returning home at dusk in cast off clothing, faces like old Florentine oak. Also, the set pieces of your faces stir me, leading citizens, but not in the same way. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Appeal by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. You who are so mighty, crimson salamander, hear me once more. I lay among the half burned sticks at the edge of the fire. The fiend was creeping in. I felt the cold tips of fingers. Oh, crimson salamander! Give me one little flame, one, that I may bind it protectingly about the wrist of him that flung me here, here, upon the very center. This is my song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This audiobook is brought to you by Full Audiobooks. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon if you love audiobooks. Ballet by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Are you not weary, great gold cross, shining in the wind? Are you not weary of seeing the stars turning over you, and the sun going to rest, and you frozen with a great lie that leaves you rigid as a knight on a marble coffin? And you, higher still, Robin, untwisting a song from the bare top twigs, are you not weary of labor, even the labor of a song? Come down, join me. For I'm lonely. First it will be a quiet pace, To ease our stiffness. But as the west yellows, You will be ready. Here in the middle of the roadway We will fling ourselves round with dust lilies. Till we are bound in their twinning stems, We will tear their flowers with arms flashing. And when the astonished stars Push aside their curtains, they will see us fall exhausted, where wheels and the pounding feet of horses will crush forth our laughter. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Canthera by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake The old black man showed me how he had been shocked in his youth by six women, dancing a set dance, stark naked below the skirts raised round their breasts, bellies flung forward, knees flying, while his gestures against the tiled wall of the dingy bathroom, swished with ecstasy to the familiar music of his old emotion. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chicory and Daisies by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake 1. Lift your flowers on bitter stems, chicory. Lift them up out of the scorched ground. 
bear no foliage but give yourself wholly to that strain under them you bitter stems that no beast eats and scorn grayness into the heat with them cool luxuriant sky blue the earth cracks and is shriveled up the wind moans piteously the sky goes out if you should fail two i saw a child with daisies for weaving into the hair tear the stems with her teeth end of poem this recording is in the public domain Conquest by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Dedicated to F. W. Hard, chilly colors, straw gray, frost gray, the gray of frozen ground, and you, O oh sun, close above the horizon, it is i hold you half against the sky half against the black tree trunk icily resplendent lie there blue city mine at last rimming the banked blue gray and rise indescribable smoky yellow into the overpowering white end of poem this recording is in the public domain Don's Roos by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake If, when my wife is sleeping, and the baby and Kathleen are sleeping, and the sun is a flame-white disk in silken mists above shining trees, if I, in my north room, dance naked, grotesquely before my mirror waving my shirt round my head and singing softly to myself i am lonely lonely i was born to be lonely i am best so if i admire my arms my face my shoulders flanks buttocks against the yellow drawn shades who shall say I am not the happy genius of my household? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dawn by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Ecstatic bird songs pound the hollow vastness of the sky with metallic clinkings, beating color up to it at a far edge, beating it, beating it with rising, triumphant ardor, stirring it into warmth, quickening it in a spreading change, bursting wildly against it as dividing the horizon. A heavy sun lifts itself, is lifted, bit by bit above the edge of things, runs free at last, out into the open, lumbering, glorified, in full release upward. Songs cease. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dedication for a Plot of Ground by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake in Long Branch, New Jersey, July 31st, 2006 This plot of ground facing the water of this inlet is dedicated to the living presence of Emily Dickinson Welcome, who was born in England, married, 
lost her husband and with her five-year-old son sailed for New York in a two-master, was driven to the Azores, ran adrift on Fire Island Shoal, met her second husband in a Brooklyn boarding-house, went with him to Puerto Rico, bore three more children, lost her second husband, lived hard for eight years in St. Thomas, Puerto Rico, San Domingo, followed the oldest son to New York, lost her daughter, lost her baby, seized the two boys of the oldest son by the second marriage, mothered them, they being motherless, fought for them against the other grandmother and the aunts, brought them here, summer after summer, defended herself here against thieves, storms, sun, fire, against flies, against girls that came smelling about, against the drought, against weeds, storm tides, neighbors, weasels that stole her chickens, against the weakness of her own hands, against the growing strength of the boys, against wind, against the stones, against trespassers, against rents, against her own mind. She grubbed this earth with her own hands, domineered over this grass plot, blackguarded her oldest son into buying it, lived here fifteen years, attained a final loneliness, and, if you can bring nothing to this place but your carcass, keep out. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Foreign by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Artsy Bashev is a Russian. I am an American. Let us wonder, my townspeople, if Artsy Bashev tends his own fires as I do, gets himself cursed for the baby's failure to thrive, loosens windows for the woman who cleans his parlor? Or has he neat servants and a quiet library, an intellectual wife, perhaps, and no children, an apartment somewhere in a back street, or lives alone or with his mother or sister? I wonder, my townspeople, if Artsy Bashev looks upon himself the more concernedly or succeeds any better than I in laying the world. I wonder which is the bigger fool in his own mind. These are shining topics, my townspeople, but hardly of great moment. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Good Night by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake In brilliant gaslight I turn the kitchen spigot And watch the water plash into the clean white sink. On the grooved drain board to one side Is a glass filled with parsley, crisped green, Waiting for the water to freshen. I glance at the spotless floor. A pair of rubber sandals lie side by side under the wall table. All is in order for the night. Waiting, with a glass in my hand, three girls in crimson satin pass close before me on the murmurous background of the crowded opera. It is memory playing the clown. Three vague, meaningless girls, full of smells, and the rustling sound of cloth rubbing on cloth, and the little slippers on carpet, high school French spoken in a loud voice, parsley in the glass, still in shining, brings me back. I take my drink and yawn deliciously. I am ready for bed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This audiobook is brought to you by Full Audiobooks. 
Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon if you love audiobooks. Gulls by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake My townspeople, beyond in the great world are many with whom it were far more profitable for me to live than here with you. These whirl about me, calling, calling, and for my own part I answer them loud as I can. And they, being free, pass. I remain. Therefore, listen, for you will not soon have another singer. First, I say this. You have seen the strange birds, have you not, that sometimes rest upon our river in winter? Let them cause you to think well, then, of the storms that drive many to shelter. These things do not happen without reason. And the next thing I say is this. I saw an eagle once circling against the clouds over one of your principal churches. Easter it was, a beautiful day. Three gulls came from above the river and crossed slowly seaward. Oh, I know you have your own hymns. I have heard them. And because I knew they invoked some great protector, I could not be angry with you, no matter how much they outraged true music. You see, it is not necessary for us to leap at each other. And, as I told you, in the end the gulls moved seaward very quietly. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hero by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Fool! Put your adventures into those things which break ships, not female flesh. Let there pass over the mind the waters of four oceans, the airs of four skies. Return hollow-bellied, keen-eyed, hard, a simple scar or two. Little girls will come bringing you roses for your buttonhole. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. El Hombre by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. It's a strange courage you give me, ancient star. Shine alone in the sunrise, towards which you lend no part. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Harbor by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Surely there, among the great docks, is peace, my mind. There with the ships moored in the river. Go out, timid child, and snuggle in among the great ships talking so quietly. Maybe you will even fall asleep near them, and be lifted into one of their laps, and in the morning there is always the morning in which to remember it all. Of what are they gossiping? God knows. And God knows it matters little, for we cannot understand them. Yet it is certainly of the sea. Of that there can be no question. It is a quiet sound. Rest. That's all I care for now. The smell of them will put us to sleep presently. Smell. It is the sea-water mingling here into the river. At least so it seems. Perhaps it is something else. But what the matter? The sea-water. It is quiet and smooth here. How slowly they move, little by little, 
trying the hawsers that drop and groan with their agony. Yes, it is certainly of the high sea they are talking. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Invitation by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake You who had the sense to choose me such a mother, You who had the indifference to create me, You who went to some pains to leave hands off me In the formative stages, I thank you most for that, perhaps, but you who with an iron head, first fiercest and with strongest love, brutalized me into strength, old Dewlap, I have reached the stage where I am teaching myself to laugh. Come on, take a walk with me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Keller Gegen Dom by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Witness, would you, one more young man in the evening of his love, hurrying to confession, steps down a gutter, crosses a street, goes in at a doorway, opens for you, like some great flower, a room filled with lamplight or whirls himself obediently to the curl of a hill, some wind-dancing afternoon, lies for you in the futile darkness of a wall, sets stars dancing to the crack or a leaf, and leans his head away, snuffs secretly the bitter powder from his thumb's hollow, takes your blessing and goes home to bed, witness instead, whether you like it or not, a dark, vinegar-smelling place from which trickles the chuckle of beginning laughter. It strikes midnight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Libertad, Igualdad, Fraternidad by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake You sullen pig of a man! You force me into the mud with your stinking ash-cart! Brother, if we were rich, we'd stick our chests out and hold our heads high. It is dreams that have destroyed us. There is no more pride in horses or in rain-holding. We sit hunched together, brooding our fate. Well, all things turn bitter in the end, whether you choose the right or the left way. And dreams are not a bad thing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love Song by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Daisies are broken petals, are news of the day, Stems lift to the grass-tops, they catch on shoes, Part in the middle, leave root, and leaves secure. Black branches carry square leaves to the wood's top, They hold firm, break with a roar, show the white, your moods are slow, the shedding of leaves, and, sure, the return in May. We walked in your father's grove, and saw the great oaks lying with roots ripped from the ground. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Love Song by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake I lie here thinking of you. The stain of love is upon the world. Yellow, yellow, yellow it eats into the leaves, smears with saffron the horned branches that lean heavily against the smooth purple sky there is no light only a honey-thick stain that drips from leaf to leaf and limb to limb spoiling the colors of the whole world you are far off there under the wine-red selvage of the west end of poem this recording is in the public domain Love Song by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Sweep the house clean, hang fresh curtains in the windows, put on a new dress and come with me. The elm is scattering its little loaves of sweet smells from the white sky. Who shall hear of us in the time to come? Let him say there was a burst of fragrance from black branches. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This audiobook is brought to you by Full Audiobooks. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon if you love audiobooks. M. B. by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Winter has spent this snow out of envy, but spring is here. He sits at the breakfast table in his yellow hair, and disdains even the sun, walking outside in spangled slippers. He looks out. There is a glare of lights before a theatre. A sparkling lady passes quickly to the seclusion of her carriage. Presently, under the dirty, wavy heaven of a borrowed room, he will make rehaled tobacco smoke his clouds, and try them against the sky's limits. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Metric Figure by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. There is a bird in the poplars. It is the sun. The leaves are little yellow fish swimming in the river. The bird skims above them. Day is on his wings. Phobos, it is he that is making the great gleam among the poplars. It is his singing outshines the noise of leaves clashing in the wind. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Muher by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake O oh, black Persian cat! Was not your life already cursed with offspring? We took you for rest to that old Yankee farm, So lonely and with so many field mice in the long grass, And you return to us in this condition? Oh, black Persian cat! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ogre by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Sweet 
Child, little girl with well-shaped legs, you cannot touch the thoughts I put over and under and around you. This is fortunate, for they would burn you to an ash otherwise. Your petals would be quite curled up. This is all beyond you, no doubt. Yet you do feel the brushings of the fine needles. The tentative lines of your whole body prove it to me. So does your fear of me, your shyness. Likewise, the toy baby cart that you are pushing. And besides, mother has begun to dress your hair in a knot. These are my excuses. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pastoral by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake The little sparrows hop ingenuously about the pavement, quarreling with sharp voices over those things that interest them. But we, who are wiser, shut ourselves in on either hand, and no one knows whether we think good or evil. But we who are wiser shut ourselves in on either hand, and no one knows whether we think good or evil. Meanwhile, the old man who goes about gathering dog-lime walks in the gutter without looking up, and his tread is more majestic than that of the Episcopal minister approaching the pulpit of a Sunday. These things astonish me beyond words. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pastoral by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. When I was younger, it was plain to me. I must make something of myself. Older now, I walk back streets, admiring the houses of the very poor, roof out of line with sides, the yard cluttered with old chicken wire, ashes, furniture gone wrong, the fences and outhouses built of barrel staves and parts of boxes, all, if I am fortunate, smeared a bluish green that, properly weathered, pleases me best of all colors. No one will believe this of vast import to the nation. This recording is in the public domain. A Portrait in Greys by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Will it never be possible to separate you from your grayness? Must you always be sinking backward into your gray-brown landscapes? And trees always in the distance, always against the gray sky? Must I be always moving counter to you? Is there no place where we can be at peace together, and the motion of our drawing apart be altogether taken up? I see myself standing upon your shoulders, touching a gray broken sky, but you, weighted down with me, yet gripping my ankles, move laboriously on, where it is level and undisturbed by colors. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Portrait of a Woman in Bed by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. There's my things, drying in the corner, that blue skirt joined to the gray skirt. 
I'm sick of trouble. Lift the covers if you want me, and you'll see the rest of my clothes, though it would be cold lying with nothing on. I won't work, and I've got no cash. What are you going to do about it? And no jewelry, the crazy fools. But I've got my two eyes and a smooth face, and here's this. Look, it's high. There's brains and blood in there. My name's Robitsa. Corsets can go to the devil, and draws along with them. What do I care? My two boys? They're keen. Let the rich lady care for them. They'll beat the school, or let them go to the gutter. That ends trouble. This house is empty, isn't it? Then it's mine, because I need it. Oh, I won't starve while there's the Bible to make them feed me. Try to help me if you want trouble, or leave me alone. That ends trouble. The county physician is a damned fool, and you can go to hell. You could have closed the door when you came in. Do it when you go out. I'm tired. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Portrait of a Young Man with a Bad Heart by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Have I seen her? Only through the window across the street. If I go meeting her on the corner, some damn fool will go blabbering it to the old man, and she'll get hell. He's a queer old bastard. Every time he sees me, you'd think I wanted to kill him. But I figure it out it's best to let things stay as they are, for a while at least. It's hard giving up the thing you want most in the world, but with this damn pump of mine liable to give out. She's a good kid, and I'd hate to hurt her, but if she can get over it, it's the best thing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Prelude by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake I know only the bare rocks of today. In these lies my brown seaweed. Green quartz veins bent through the wet shale. In these lie my pools left by the tide. Quiet, forgetting waves. On these stiffen white starfish, On these I slip barefooted. Whispers of the fishy air touch my body. Sisters, I say to them. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. This audiobook is brought to you by Full Audiobooks. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon if you love audiobooks. Promenade by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. One. Well, mind. Here we have our little son beside us. A little diversion before breakfast. Come. We'll walk down the road till the bacon will be frying. We might better be idle. A poem might come of it. Oh, be useful. Save annoyance to Flossie. And besides, the wind. It's cold. It blows our old pants out. It makes us shiver. See the heavy trees shifting their weight before it? Let us be trees. An old house. A hill with grass on it. 
the baby's arms are blue come move be quieted two so we'll sit here now and throw pebbles into this water trickle splash the water up splash it up sonny laugh hit it there deep under the grass see it splash ah mind see it splash it is alive throw pieces of broken leaves into it they'll pass through no yes just away now for the cows but it's cold it's getting dark it's going to rain no further three oh then a wreath let's refresh something they used to write well of two fern plumes strip them to the mid rib along one side bind the tips with a grass stem bend and intertwist the stalks at the back so ah now we are crowned now we are a poet quickly a bunch of little flowers for flossy the little ones only a red clover one blue heel all a sprig of bone set one primrose a head of indian tobacco this magenta speck and this little lavender home now my mind sonny's arms are icy i tell you and have breakfast end of poem this recording is in the public domain Repost by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Love is like water or the air, my townspeople. It cleanses and dissipates evil gases. It is like poetry, too, and for the same reasons. Love is so precious, my townspeople, that if I were you, I would have it under lock and key, like the air or the Atlantic, or like poetry. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Smell by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake O oh, strong, rigid, and deeply hollowed nose of mine! What will you not be smelling? What tactless asses we are, you and I, bony nose, always indiscriminate, always unashamed! And now it is the scouring flowers of the bedraggled poplars, a festering pulp on the wet earth beneath them with what deep thirst we quicken our desires to the rank odor of a passing springtime can you not be decent can you not reserve your ardors for something less unlovely what girl will care for us do you think if we continue in these ways must you taste everything must you know everything must you have a part in everything End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Spring Strains by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. In a tissue thin monotone of blue gray buds crowded erect with desire against the sky tense blue-gray twigs slenderly anchoring them down drawing them in two blue-gray birds chasing a third struggle in circles angles swift convergings to a point that bursts instantly 
vibrant bowing limbs pull downward sucking in the sky that bulges from behind plastering itself against them in packed rifts rock blue and dirty orange but hold hard rigid jointed trees the blinding and red-edged sunblur creeping energy concentrated counterforce wells sky buds trees rivets them in one puckering hold sticks through pulls the whole counter-pulling mass upward to the right locks even the opaque not yet defined ground in a terrific drag that is loosening the very tap-roots on a tissue-thin monotone of blue-gray buds two blue-gray birds chasing a third at full cry now they are flung outward and up disappearing suddenly end of poem this recording is in the public domain summer song by william carlos williams read for LibriVox.org by alan davis drake wanderer moon smiling a faintly ironical smile at this brilliant dew-moistened summer morning a detached sleepily indifferent smile a wanderer smile if i should buy a shirt your color and put on a necktie sky blue where would they carry me and a poem this recording is in the public domain sympathetic portrait of a child by william carlos williams read for librivox dot org by alan drake the murderer's little daughter who is barely ten years old jerks her shoulders right and left so as to catch a glimpse of me without turning round her skinny little arms wrap themselves this way then that reversingly about her body nervously she crushes her straw hat about her eyes and tilts her head to deepen the shadow smiling excitedly as best as she can she hides herself in the full sunlight her cordy legs writhing beneath the little flowered dress that leaves them bare from the mid-thigh to ankle why has she chosen me for the knife that darts along her smile and a poem this recording is in the public domain to a solitary disciple by william carlos williams read for librivox dot org by alan davis drake rather notice mon cheri that the moon is tilted above the point of the steeple than that its color is shell pink rather observe that it is early morning than that the sky is smooth as a turquoise rather grasp how the dark converging lines of the steeple meet the pinnacle perceive how its little ornament tries to stop them see how it fails see how the converging lines of the hexagonal spire escape upward receding dividing sepals that guard and contain the flower observe how motionless the eaten moon lies in the protecting lines it is true in the light colors of the morning brownstone and slate shine orange and dark blue but observe the oppressive weight of the squat edifice observe the jasmine lightness of the moon end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. <clears throat> Trees by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Crooked black tree on your little gray-black hillock Ridiculously raised one step towards the infinite summits of the night Even you, the few gray stars drawn upward into the vague melody of harsh threads bent as you are from straining against the bitter horizontals of the north wind there below you how easily the long yellow notes of poplars flow upward in a descending scale each note secure in its own posture singularly woven all voices are blent willingly against the heaving contrabass of the dark but you alone warp yourself passionately to one side in your eagerness end of poem this recording is in the public domain virtue by william carlos williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Now, why, whirlpools of orange and purple flame, Feather twists of chrome on a green ground, Funneling down upon the steaming phallus head Of the mad sun himself, blackened crimson. Now, why, it is the smile of her, the smell of her, the vulgar and fighting mouth of her, it is, oh, nothing new, nothing that lasts an eternity, nothing worth putting out to interest, nothing but the fixing of an eye concretely upon emptiness. Come, here are cross-eyed men, a boy with a patch, men walking in their shirts men in hats dark men a pale man with little black moustaches and a dirty white coat fat men with pudgy faces thin faces crooked faces slit eyes gray eyes black eyes old men with dirty beards men in vests with gold watch chains come End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Winter Sunset by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Then I raised my head and started out over the blue February waste to the blue bank of hill with stars on it, in strings and festoons. But above that, one opaque stone of a cloud, just on the hill, left and right as far as I could see. And above that, a red streak, then icy blue sky. It was a fearful thing to come into a man's heart at that time, that stone over the little blinking stars they'd set there. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This audiobook is brought to you by Full Audiobooks. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon if you love audiobooks. Woman Walking by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake An oblique cloud of purple smoke across a milky silhouette of house sides and tiny trees. A little village that ends in a saw edge of mist-covered trees on a sheet of gray sky. 
to the right jutting in a dark crimson corner of roof to the left half a tree what a blessing it is to see you in the street again powerful woman coming with swinging haunches breasts straight forward subtle shoulders full arms and strong soft hands i've felt them carrying the heavy basket i might well see you oftener and for a different reason than the fresh eggs you bring us so regularly yes you young as i with bony brows kind gray eyes and a kind mouth you walking towards me from that dead hillside i might well see you oftener End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.